What's up, what's up, what's up? The long-awaited camera tutorial is finally here, dudes. You guys asked and asked and asked for it, so we finally f***ing delivered. Almost, uh, three months after you guys voted for it. Yeah, my bad. This nether update, man, it's eating up my productivity. But don't worry, I didn't forget about RFMC. I got you guys. I'm gonna split this tutorial into three parts. The first part, I'll explain the utility of the camera, just how it works. The second part, I'll explain the limitations of Moon Animator's camera cutscenes. The third part, I'll just show y'all some cool cinematic tricks and rules to follow. If you already know how to use the camera, you can go ahead and skip to the second part of this video. If you only want to know how to use the camera, you only have to watch the first part. I'm trying to make this one extremely thorough so there's no confusion, alright? This video will cover everything, so I hope I can help you guys out. So, uh, let's get started, yeah? Okay, so you can see I've got my scene set up here. It's set in 1950 Chicago. We've got this cool looking police officer just smoking a cigarette. By the way, kids, don't smoke. I feel like that's obvious. For the scene, what I had pictured was it would start out the police sign and then move down to the cop, okay? So the first thing you need to do before you start animating the camera is set the aspect ratio on Roblox Studio. This will make it so you can see exactly what it will look like on YouTube. So to do that, just go to the top right of Studio and click this phone and tablet button, okay? Now I know what you're thinking. Ben, it looks like a phone. I know it looks like a phone, you goofball. We have to switch it from phone mode to desktop mode, okay? So you just click this iPhone 6 button or whatever it says and then go down to desktop. And you're gonna pick either HD 720 or HD 1080. They have the same shape and aspect ratio, but if you can fit 1080 on your screen and see what's going on, do that. But if it doesn't fit, just do 720. Okay, so let's just start animating the camera, okay? Before we start animating the camera, if you have any other camera plugins, make sure to disable them or uninstall them, okay? For some reason, it just breaks Moon's camera. Let's leave it at that. Before we do anything, we need to set the field of view. I said this in my movie tutorial video, but the Roblox default FOV is 70, which is too high. 70 to 90 is like a gaming FOV like in Minecraft, but we need it at 20 to 50 for video making. So just click on field of view and then click plus on your numpad. Select the keyframe and then click seven on your numpad. Go to value and then I'm gonna set it to 30. Now that we're done with that boring shit, we can actually do something interesting. So now let's just set up a shot, okay? So just move to the position you wanna go to. Click C frame and then add a keyframe. So make sure you actually move to where you want the second shot to be before you move the camera because if you move it and then like set it up then it'll just cut back. So let's move over to five seconds. Let's move down, set up that shot. As you can see, it's actually animating the positions of the camera. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you're going from one shot to another like this, you don't want to keep this on linear because it's not smooth. So select the second keyframe, go to easing, and then let's change it to sign in out. We'll just make it a bit more smooth, you know? Pretty good. You can really set this to anything. Like you could have the camera bounce if you really wanted, like, Hmm, yes, perfecto. But yeah, you can't go wrong with setting this as sign in out. It'll just look really good, you know? When in doubt, just do that. Yeah, also if you want the camera to linger at one part for a second rather than immediately move, just move these keyframes over. Hold shift if it's not moving. So let's move it to two seconds, okay? Select these two keyframes and click shift C, and then go to the beginning and click shift V, okay? I'll make it not move for a second and then it'll start going, okay? All right, I'll show you jump cuts now. So let's just say I wanted a few city establishment shots before it cuts over to the police sun. Before we do anything, let's click the button next to C-frame and field of view. This will make it so it doesn't actually animate the camera right now, okay? Let's find a good shot. Like, let's do it right here next to the casino. So let me set the field of view real fast. Let's set up a shot. Yeah, that looks good. Uncheck them. Let's set up another shot. Let's do it at the bank. I'll do it at two seconds set a field of view let's add a shot uncheck them let's do another shot let's do it at the cemetery add a keyframe for a field of view all right let's set up a shot uh right there and then i'll have it cut over at six seconds so let's just cut and paste these okay obviously we don't want it to move to each different shot right we want it to jump cut so let's say we selected these two keyframes and then clicked seven 
and then went to easing. Now let's set it to constant. As you can see, it's a flat line, okay? What that means is it will not actually animate these two keyframes in between. It'll just jump when it gets there, okay? So let's set that for everything. And we'll add keyframe here, move it there, and move that, okay? Now watch, it stays at the casino, and then it jumps over to the bank, and then it jumps to the cemetery, and then it jumps to the police sign, waits, and then it moves down, okay? That's how you do jump shots. Let's say you want something to happen in between these two jumps, okay? You click this keyframe and click four on the numpad, or just go like one keyframe before, you know? Let's just have it do something, look that way, okay? Yep. You might have this issue where like, if you right click and then move the camera, it'll jump like that. It's kind of annoying, but like just press A and D really fast and then like, it's fine, okay? You can just move, move, like you get the point. You could do something like that. I mean, it doesn't look good, but <laughs> you could do that. If you wanna have a camera rotation, it's not that hard. Just click camera and then click rotation and then Use your scroll wheel to set it exactly how you want. X will make it go up and down, Y will make it go sideways, and then Z will really like spin the camera, you know? You got a keyframe and then you can see like it rotates the camera in between, okay? The last thing I wanna show you is attaching the camera to a part. You need the explorer open and just find the part that you want it attached to, okay? And click camera and go to the wrench button and click attach to part. Just add a keyframe for attach to part. Select it and click seven, go to value and find the brick that you want to attach it to. Select it and then click set, okay? Click okay. As you can see, it moves with the brick, okay? This is good for first person animations. Like you wouldn't want to use a default rig like this. Like you'd want to use an FPS rig, okay? I'm not the master at first person animation, so I can't really show you a good way to do it, but I'll put an FPS rig in the description that you can mess around with. You can make some good looking shit with it. I'll tell you what. Really though, you can set this to whatever part you want. Like you could set it to a fucking fire hydrant if you want. Like, well, it's upside down, but it's attached to the fire hydrant. You get me? Yep, that's a, uh... That's pretty much the utility of the camera. You know the ins and outs of how it works now. If that's all you want to know, you can click off now. Congratulations. But now I'm gonna show you guys the problem with the moon animator camera, okay? Now there are some serious limitations with using the moon animator camera as of right now. First, let me explain what a dolly is. In Hollywood films, I'm sure you've seen some pretty insane looking camera sequences. Like think of that movie 1917. It looks like it's all filmed in one shot and it's all nice and smooth, you know? Think of that daredevil hallway fight scene where it's like all one shot comes out triumphant and he like beats up all the guys but you see the struggle he goes through. That's because films attach a camera to a dolly which looks like this. It kind of looks like train tracks, you know? And it's like attached to wheels and it's got nice curves and all that. The unfortunate truth as of right now is that the moon animator camera cannot do this nearly as well. I'm gonna use my friend Hole as an example, okay? It's set on the Joker stairs and I'm gonna have him do a Fortnite default dance, okay? And let's say for some reason I wanted the camera to perfectly circle around him. I'm going to film this twice in different ways. On the first shot, I'm going to attach the camera to a circle brick with a camera part attached. On the second shot, I'm going to try to eyeball it using the moon animator camera. Let's just take a look at how vastly different they look real fast, okay? looks very different, huh? That's because we can't change the trajectory path of the camera and moon animator. We can't make it go in a specific shape from one point to another. It's getting to the next shot in the fastest, most efficient way possible, but it's not getting there in a cinematic way, capiche? Instead of looking like a circle, doing it manually would look more like a diamond, okay? Some of you may be thinking like, oh Ben, just change the easing style, it'll look better, right? 
but no, it, it won't. Easing style doesn't magically change the camera positioning or how it gets from one shot to another. It only changes the speed at which it gets there. Okay. So let's say with that diamond shape, you tried to correct that and add like two or three extra keyframes in between each shot and tried to kind of emulate a circular shape, but it'll just look even worse than it did before. Like, just don't do it. There is a cutscene plugin coming out with custom tweening. That basically means we could change the path of the camera from one point to another, but but uh, we haven't heard much about it, at least not since he made that tweet. So I don't know what's going on. I'll say update on the plugin and let you guys know if it ever comes out. Like I'll probably do a video on it or something. For now, we just have to work with what we've got. Honestly, with the limitations we have, I suggest just keeping it simple because you know the more complex you make it, the more janky it'll look. I usually just do the first shot and then the last shot. And then I think, how can I achieve what I need for the scene? in the least janky way possible. You could also try to uh, use that big brain of yours to come up with tricks to achieve what you're looking for. Nothing's really impossible. Like you could use that dolly model that I used and then like move the dolly model and then like rotate it, like something like that. But it's just a hassle. It's like if you were planning on making like a five minute smooth continuous shot or some super complex anime opening with like a ton of camera movements, like you're gonna have a bad time. Good luck, but it's gonna be rough. Yeah. Now that you understand the limitations of what you're using, I'll show you some different like cinematic camera techniques and whatnot. The rule of thirds is a composition technique where you basically use these quadrants to lead the viewer's eyes. You'll notice it in a lot of paintings and just photography and whatnot. It basically puts most of the focus on one of these four corners, or it centers it in the whole screen. In movies, you can generally use this to your advantage. Like if you jump cut a shot, it switches sides from one side to another. You can have it on the right top corner and then move it to the left top corner. Or from this Mission Impossible footage, you can kind of see it's generally in that area of one of the corners or it'll uh, move to the center. It's basically just a nice little trick to know where your viewer's eyes are, you know? Once you know this rule exists, you can't really unsee it, you know? <laughs> like, it becomes common sense just knowing like where the area is. Luckily, Moon Animator actually has this built into the camera. So you can just go down the camera and click a rule of thirds. This one's really not that hard to get down. If two characters are engaged in conversation, the camera should stay 180 degrees around them, okay? It should look like this or this. You wouldn't jump from this side of a character to this side. It looks jarring. You would jump from here to here, 180 degrees. If you're doing more than two characters, uh, fucking forget about it. Don't worry, just do what you want. Now I'm gonna break down the five different camera movements and techniques that cinematographers use. Don't worry about um, actually remembering the names of these. This is just common sense. It's like one of those things in school that you don't have to remember the exact name of it, but you know what it is. You know what I'm talking about, okay? But I'll break it down for you. This is really not that hard to do. You basically just keep the spot the camera's in stationary, but just rotate which direction it's facing at. In Roblox Studio, this basically just means don't press WASD, but you hold right click and change where the camera's facing. It's really good for scenic sort of shots, like a large landscape, or if you have it quickly go from one shot to another, it's like a jolt of energy. This is exactly like the pan, but you go up and down. It's good for revealing something, or sometimes it just looks good. It's up to you. I explained this earlier, but this is just moving the camera from one point to another. That means you just press WSD in studio and just set up a second shot somewhere else, and it goes from one point to another. Same exact thing as the dolly, but you go up and down. Yep, <laughs> that's, that's all it is. This is exactly what it sounds like, a camera zoom. You go from high to low FOV or low to high. It's like a camera zoom, simple as that. If you do it really fast and sudden, then it's pretty funny. It's good for visual comedy or whatever. You could also do what they did in that movie Jaws. It's basically where you move the camera backwards, but it zooms in really close to the character. This is really good for something shocking or just a sudden realization. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. I'm not gonna get any more complex than that, don't worry. You don't need to make flashcards or remember exactly what everything is called. It's just putting a name to what we already see. You know, honestly, I didn't know what these were called until I worked on this tutorial. I kind of just got into the groove of it over the years. You may feel like you're getting information overload, but don't worry. 
okay? Relax. It gets easy, I promise. After this tutorial, I highly suggest re-watching one of your favorite movies. And just pay attention to how they use the camera. When do they move the camera? When do they keep it stationary? When do they use a camera pan? Just keep that stuff in mind, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll leave an unlisted camera tutorials playlist in the description if you want to go down the rabbit hole. They basically break down how and when to apply camera techniques. Honestly though, I think re-watching a movie and just paying attention to the camera cinematography will work just fine. Going for an anime style? Watch your favorite anime, pay attention to the camera. Making a comedic Roblox video? Watch an episode of your favorite cartoon. Action movie? Watch a Bond film. Something thriller and like heavily cinematic? Try a Nolan film. You see what I mean? Discover your own style. Everything will be fine. Cause at the end of the day, you could be the world's greatest character animator. But if your camera direction is sh your video is sh S tier animation can be ruined by bad video direction. You get me? But yeah, that's that's camera animation and how to do it well. Good luck.